Barbecue superstars go professional barbecue. Wow. Right there it is. We're toasting those sesame seeds on medium heat. We're cooking on 330 to 350, uh -huh. and that's going to actually fully develop that beef flavor okay. and not and not create a uh, char on there to create that bitterness. We want toasted sesame seeds for fully developed beef flavor. In okay. Those are some flavor profiles we're going after. Sesame seeds, onion powder, seasoned salt, and red and black pepper. Now, what kind of steak do you have going on? We're doing bar? New York strips right now, but we've also been throwing in some ribeyes. Uh, lean beef flavor and what you're going to do is you're going to do four steps okay. four steps for a forty dollar steak okay. and you got you do it at home for eight or nine dollars but take the missus to a show okay yes what we're going to do is we're actually going to do one step 330 degrees preheat your grill second step put it on five to seven minutes on the first side flip it and these beautiful digital read thermometers tell us the rest okay. we go in for the third step and cook to 140 internal temperature take it off like grandma's cookies. You take them out the oven, they continue to cook up on top, right? Yes. We're going to take that steak off and it's going to continue to rise up about five more degrees to be a perfect medium rare at 145. Oh. And then you're going to let that rest for five minutes and we work that steak on that grill, right? Yes. And all those juices have run to the middle. Yes. Well, we need to let it rest and those juices come back out and make tender, juicy, velvety beef for a five minute rest. Those four steps will get you a perfect steak at home. We're making some uh, homemade breakfast sausage and we're making French toast on this primo and then in a little while, probably about 15 to 20 minutes, we'll prepare some frittatas and uh, maybe even a sweet potato hash if we get around to it. So you're saying that you can actually do more on a primo grill than actually just grill meat? You can uh, grill anything you would like to on the primo, so I can promise you that. You remember last night we had some uh, some of Jack Daniels uh, guests here, and what did you end up cooking for these guys on a primo? I uh, cooked something that we'll have later this evening. We had uh, brownies and cheesecake last night that I cooked on, uh, I believe, that primo. So for the past two weeks, Chef Tony has created 16 different recipes all involving Jack Daniels from scratch that we're going to be featuring here throughout the day today. As you see on the schedule up here, we'll start with breakfast all the way down to dinner. So throughout the time, stop on by. Hey, we have samples to get out to everyone. And all this is being done on a Primo smoker. What we're trying to do is educate everyone that you can actually do more on a grill besides just grilling. Grill, and that's a bake. Bake on a grill. I know you want to come up here and just come on up. We'll probably fit all of these people up here. Guys, you're welcome to come up and come on, watch what Chef is doing up here. So we actually have a griddle, a griddle on the Primo right now. Sorry guys. Chef, why don't you talk about a little bit? Why don't you talk about? We'll talk a little bit about how the grill function works with this grill. Okay. Um, the way it works, okay. me, the way that you're able to go from searing, regular grilling, uh, baking, high temp baking, convection baking, all has to do with the oxygen airflow that comes, the way it's built, and the uh, efficiency of it with the ceramics. The air, as you can see, that's the only amount of air coming through there. So there's not a lot of fuel being burned to hold. As you can see, well, it's been open for a long time, but it won't take long to go back. We're holding at about 325, 350 right now. And because we're only using that much air to go through the fuel, we're not really, we're not really consuming that much charcoal. And we're using uh, natural lump charcoal, so there's, not, there's no chemicals involved, like the press briquettes that have Lord knows what they have in it. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not going to speculate about what's in the briquettes, but um, and so all we have to do if we want to go to say 450 to cook something else, we have that one at 450. All we would have to do is probably open the bottom about about an inch or so. I mean, it's, there's there's no science to it, and, and you don't have to be at 450. I usually cook when I'm in the 400 range. I cook between four and 450. In the 300 range, I cook with three, between 325 and 375. It's a big window because of the way that it captures and, and contains the moisture. And again, 
I mean, air dries out. You know, dry your hair in the morning, use a hair dryer, right? Blows, hot air. Well, there's not a whole lot of hot air going past your food. And that's part of the efficiency and why the food will come out so moist. And it won't be very moist if I continue to leave it there, so I'm going to pull it off so you guys can actually taste it. How about that? I think the better place is on the inside today, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Man, putting that trailer in there worked out good. Blocks the wind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That skin's so thin, I just look right through and see the chicken. Yeah. yeah. Watch this. Oh. Man, here's a professional. Yeah. He is. Shoot, he's a good guy, too. Now, folks, this is real competition chicken that will be turned in uh, at the Florida Barbecue Association Triple Crown. So this is a real competition uh, in Florida and in Perry, Florida and this chicken will really be turned in. All right, here we go. Tenth place, chicken category, Lang Barbecue Smokers. Ninth place, chicken, Munchy Smokehouse. Eighth place. Big Papa's Country Kitchen. Seventh place. Holy.